Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Heath, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in to my webinar today. Um, I'm sure I have a lot of friends <laughs> who have tuned in, who have attended my workshop, and my workshops when I was when I was presenting workshops. Anyway, I always enjoy doing the Topaz webinars, and I can show everyone what I have been up to lately with all of the new programs that you've introduced. And my webinar today is going to be focused on the updated uh, Impression 2 program. And my feeling about this program is there is unlimited creative potential for all of us within this program. And I know my imagery has really, um, this program has helped me expand my imagination and I've been, I feel I've been producing more, a more powerful narrative um, with my work because of it. So for today's webinar, I'm going to focus more on the how-to approach for taking your photographic files from raw to envisioned. In other words, more than just a technical orientation of the software, I am going to attempt to share with you my approach to creating a more expressive image. And I have four images here. Hopefully, we'll get through all of them. The first image um, I, that uh, you can see this on my screen, I hope. It is an image that was taken in my studio of a gal who has her own flamingo dance company here. And um, I did a workshop a couple of years ago and we took a lot of images. We've got a lot of great images. So this is one of the images. And as you can see, um, I'm looking at it and the thing that I love most about this image is her, first of all, her pose is uh, very beautiful and her costume I totally love. But as you can see, the background is certainly uh, something that needs revision. Normally, uh, normally before uh, I started into Glow 2 and Impression 2, I would have to revise this background in Photoshop using either a gradient or some type of a blur or some type of a composite. So this one we're just doing impression for the background revision and to change the whole nature of the image. So I'm going to do a Command J and I'm going to name my layer Impression 2. We're going to go up here to Filter. Whoops and Topaz, and I'm going to go into Impression 2. And this is what the image will, this is the original, and here is the image finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the image so that we can start on it. And now it'll default back to the last preset that I was in. But we're going to go up here, and I don't know if any of you, if, if any of you have been working in Impression 2, but if not, I'll give you a, a couple of tips here. First, what I do is I go into Browse, and we have here Local, Community, or Both. Now, if you choose the Local, that will give you Topaz presets. It will give you the your own personal creative uh, presets that you've saved that you have done in uh, this in in this program, or or and also downloaded favorites from the community. The community is these are all the donated presets from different people that have created presets for Topaz. So um, and then you can go into both, and that'll give you all the presets that are available, and there are a lot of them. I mean, you could scroll through these for hours and find some really fabulous things. So, but for today, I'm going to go into local. And the preset that I chose for this, I saved in favorite. So I always have this preset and I can use it for more images. Um, I tend not to do that. I tend to uh, really customize each image, you know, and then save it for future, but I very rarely use it on another image. So anyway, we're going to be in local, and I'm going to go into modern. 
And I happen to like the modern presets that uh, I've used a few of them and they've really, really helped me in uh, getting to where I want to go with recreating, you know, an, an exciting image from a raw capture. So I'm going to look for Woodstock. And if I don't want to scroll through all of these presets, what I can do is, I've just recently learned from Heath that I can type in W-O-O-D-S-T-O-C-K, click return, and I can get, I can get my preset. So I'm going to click on that right now, and this is the start. Now right here in this screen you can see my original. Um, I'm going to erase that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a double a, a screen with my original and with the image that I'm working on. And this helps me see where I'm going. It gives me a very good perspective in um, how my image is evolving. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tweak the preset because what I want here is I want a very painterly, um, beautiful color palette, and I can get that uh, by tweaking this this image. In it, it what it does is it gives you all of these options when you go to tweak the image. You can change the strokes, you can revise the color, you can work in lighting, you can work in texture, and you can work in masking, which is a phenomenal masking program. I, as my students know and my friends, I do a lot of masking, and mas this, this program is saving my life. You'll see, you won't believe how easy it is to use. So anyway, for this image, we're going to go into stroke, and what I'm going to do is, this, this option here gives you a low number of strokes on your canvas, a medium number, or a high number. Now, the preset that you see here, this effect gives you the high number. I'm going to go, I'm tweaking all this. And this is total, this is not scientific, this is aesthetic. This is all aesthetics. It's what's your eye, what you visualize, what you want for your image. So anyway, I'm going to go here to medium. And what I'm just going to I'm just going to be working in the stroke options now and the stroke sliders. So I'm going to bring the paint volume, which gives you a more opaque feel, the thicker paint, all the way up to 100 percent. And then I'm also going to bring the large volume brush up to 100 percent. I'm going to bring the paint opacity up to 100 percent. And now you can start seeing the changes in the in the strokes on the canvas. And then I'm going to bring up the stroke rotation to 100%, the rotation to 100%. I'm going to leave the stroke variation alone. I'm going to leave the, the stroke width. I'm bringing down all the way, I'm sliding it all the way to the left because I want more of kind of a, a a kind of a graphic, a, I want the strokes more linear and, and very fine, thin strokes. The stroke length um, I'm going to also bring down, and you can see what happens here. I'm going to bring it to about 30 minus 30, 38, okay? So we have this no, I'm not going to bring it down to that. I'm sorry. I'm bringing it up to 38%. Okay. And then we have here the, uh, the spill. Now, the spill, um, what that does is that brings up the effect of the feature, how, how much of the canvas it's covering. Like if I go all the way down to here, we have less effect of the, of the strokes. If I bring it up, we have the full effect of the tweaking that I did with the strokes. So I'm going to put the spill at um, zero, about zero, five here. Okay. 
And then we have down here the spill, the uh, smudge. I'm not touching that right now. And the coverage. And what I'm going to do is the, on the um, on the coverage. Actually, the coverage allows you if you click on this slider. Oops, you can change the coverage center. And what that allows you to do is you can say if we go up here, you can see how it is removing the effects that I have created, that I've just created. So you can you can really play around with this and get all different aesthetics for this canvas. So anyway, I'm putting this back here and so that I don't get confused when I'm working in these programs. When I am finished with one particular preset here, I'm going to collapse it. So then if I like, I can go into I can go into color. And here I'm going to just demo it. I'm not touching this color right now. I'm going to demo what we can do. We can change the hue, which is the color. We can go into different color combinations if we like. If I push this slider all the way to the left, I can get cooler colors. If I push it to the right, I can get warmer colors, as you can see. I'm in the yellows, the oranges, the greens, and they're warmer tones. But I'm going to put this back to here. Now, if I fool around with these sliders and I say, oh my god, where was I? What do I do? All you have to do is, if you go up here and you click reset, I believe that what's going to happen is it's going to set back to the default values, as it says here. You don't want to do that. You don't want to remove all of the uh, adjustments you made in stroke. So what I can do here is I can go down here and I can just click undo last action. So that'll get me out of there. And then here you have the overall lightness and the darkness. That's funny. Now that, that brings you all the way back to your original. So we're going to go here. I'm going to collapse this. Then we also have in here different lighting options. And this is wonderful because you can use the vignettes. And you can, you can make all kinds of adjustments to the background colors and everything. I'm not going to get into that with this image, but we're going to do this on another image. But I just want to show you the different op options you have within this, this preset in impressions. And then you can also have an overlay of texture if you click on any of these texture effects here, which I have enough texture. Oops, I have enough. Let's fit this. I have enough texture in this image that I don't need to deal with that either. Now here's the part that I love. This is the masking. If I click on this this little eye here, this will give me a spot, okay? And I can expand, I can relocate it, I can change it to bring back my original just selectively within the image. But let's expand the masking ability here. I can take, I, you, can, you can use the spot, um, you can use the brush, and with the brush you can also, the radius is the size of the brush. So here I have a small brush, here's a larger brush, and as you can see I have clicked on the black square. And what the black square will do the black will reveal, it'll bring back my original image. Okay, but I don't want to do that. So, and I've got a strength of 100%. I can go to, say, 50%, and I can click on white, and I can just bring back whatever it is I want to bring back to this. Okay? Um, you can go into color, and that will, that will work with the different, the, the opacity of the different hues, the colors that you have in here. And then the range. I don't, I don't use this very often, so I, I'm not too knowledgeable in this. Then also you've got the opacity slider down here. And this will globally bring back part of your image right here. So this is also, 
this is also a, um, a very good tool if you don't want the full effect of everything that you've done and um, you just want maybe just, just, just a part of the, you know, part of it. You don't have the full opacity here. Luminosity. Oh, we went into luminosity. Yeah. So here we can change the luminosity. Okay, and then we have the brush and you also can use the spot and you can invert it so that the effect only appears where you want it. You can leave the background, you can invert it, and then just have the effect on the subject, on your foreground. So this was not the one intended. I'm sorry about that. Let me show you. Let me go into here and show you. Oh, this is, this is the intended image here. So you can see what I did. I think what I forgot to do in this first image when I was demonstrating, I didn't use the vignette option enough and remove the whole effect all over the whole. So what it did was it just brought in the, the white background and just left some of the painterly effect in part of the background and my subject and then I got a painting. Yeah, it looks like what you did is you changed your vignette color to white. And then when you change the coverage, yes. it it brought all that it, it brought all that background and kind of knocked it out. That's really cool. that's exactly that's exactly what I did. Heath, thank you so much. This is an image of a leopard that was taken while I was on safari in Botswana, and we were on a very early morning drive, and we spotted this leopard in the tree, and he was just absolutely adorable. And um, I love just his look of innocence and curiosity, but there were two major, major drawbacks into turning this into a print. I knew I needed to achieve something else in post-production. One was exposure. It was overexposed, both the foreground and the background. And the color, because of the overexposure, was um, diminished. So this is the image that I'm going to take into two programs. First, we're going to go, as I said, in my dance image. Um, I'll explain this again. I would have normally worked in Photoshop and I would have done um, some exposure adjustment and I would have done some um, some clarity probably in, an, in, uh, in uh, a topaz uh, clarity. So, and some color adjustments, but what I did was I challenged myself and I said, okay, I'm going to go into Glow and see if something can help me pop this image. So Command-J, and I'm going to name this. So I always name my layers. If you want to go back, you know what you've done. So we're going to go into Filter, Topaz Labs. We're going to go into Glow 2. And what I want to do is, okay, this is what the image res how the image resulted. Now this is what we brought in, and I'm going to show you how I did this, and this is the image. So I am going to reset, and this will, and what I'm going to do is now, uh, I want, as you can see, um, uh, when I showed you the image, I wanted kind of an HDR uh, gritty kind of effect, because I knew I was going to turn this into a painting. But I had to prep the image before I went into impression because I went into impression initially without going into glow and I found I couldn't get the right effect. It does matter what you initially bring into a program. So in terms of color and exposure and, and all of that because it'll, it'll produce different kinds of effects. So you need to prep an image sometimes when it you know, has this many problems. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go up here and I saved this in favorites, but, <coughs> excuse me, I want you to see how I found it. So I'm going to go into um, uh, Fur and Feathers and then I went down here and I found a preset called Punched punched one. 
And that, that was a very good start. I believe this is it right. No, that's not it. It's this one. Oh, no. Wait, I'm sorry. That's my effect. Okay. I saved this, and now this particular preset is something that I created, and you can find it in Fur and Feathers under Glow Leopard. So I'm right here. And I'm in, this is where I started. I started in punched one. And I'm going to expand the sliders now. And I'm going to start tweaking it so I can get the customized effects that I want for this image. People can use this as kind of an HDR effect to things. And it's really good for leaves and, you know, when you have a subject like this and then you have a lot of uh, beautiful leaves, but they're just not, it, it's not working together. This is good. Okay, so we're going to go into punched one, and I am going to expand these sliders. And now I'm going to go into glow type. There's a glow, there's a, uh, there's a primary glow, and there's a secondary glow. And I'm going to show you here, I'm going to collapse this, and I'm going to show you again what categories you have to tweak here. There's primary glow, there's secondary glow, there's color, finishing touches, and masking. I do not necessarily have to go into every category. Uh, I usually do to play to find out what kind of effects I'm going to get. I don't know. I don't have a plan when I go in here. This is not, as I say, a scientific based based thing. This is aesthetics. So I'm going to go into primary glow and here are the adjustments that I'm going to make to this preset. Excuse me. Um, the glow strength I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the effect, uh, the effect sharpness actually. I'm going to boost up a bit because remember I want to get more clarity here and I want to get more of a gritty effect. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go up to like 37. Electrify is going to really pop it up. I'm going to bring that all the way to the right, 100%. And then simplify details. If I, if I bring that up, let's see if I want to do that. Yeah, if I bring simplify details up, I can soften the leaves a bit. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the edge color down and I'm going to bring the detail strength up to like, oh, maybe 13. Now you can see how this is all, this is getting very harmonious. It's getting to be, it's making more sense to me looking at it. Um, and then the detail size I'm going to bring up just a little bit. You see, it's all in subtle tweaking for the most part. You get, you, you look through the presets, you find something that resonates with you, and then you go in there and then you say, okay, I can tweak all of this because somebody already gave me a road map, you know? And that's what's so fabulous about these programs. So here I'm going to do the detail size, and now the brightness, I'm going to leave that alone, and the contrast, I'm going to go up a bit. And what that's going to do, as you can see, in the, it's, it's just kind of blending the leaves in the background for me. And that's good. I don't want them to be quite as obvious as the leopard. So I can, here's what I can do. I can just soften the leaves. And then the saturation. I'm having a hard time seeing with this here. The saturation, I'm going to bring, uh, I think I'm going to play with that and maybe bring that up a bit. I don't know if it's going to make too much difference. Okay. <clears throat> and I've got the contrast where I want it. And then what I'm going to do is, not to confuse myself, I'm not going to click reset. Don't ever do that because you're going to go back to the default. Uh, you're going to go back to fur and feathers and you're going to lose all your punched effects right there. Secondary glow, um, I don't use this very often. You can play around with this and see if it does anything to enhance your image. And then you can also undo it when you go down to the undo option here. However, if 
at least this is the way I work. When I get to a point where I'm really liking the image, I'm, I don't fool around because I have plenty of plenty of more options to um, you know to go to here. So and then I have color, and the color is fine for me, so I'm not going in there. And then there's finishing touches, and it gives you all of it gives you the vignetting, it gives you the lighting, uh, you know the different lighting effects, and you can do that. But I'm not going to touch any of that. I do want to show you is in the masking, and this again is something I feel we're all blessed with this masking program, I must tell you. When I just click on the luminosity, okay, this will give me a, a, a global a global effect. Now I can I'm gonna I'm just gonna use the luminosity. I'm not brushing anything in and I'm just using the slider. And now I have the exact effect that I want on this image. So, and this is the range, how far into the image. And the reason that I chose the luminosity is because it popped up the whites in the background a little. They were appearing a little dull. And what I'm going to do here is, now I'm going to click in on OK. And we're using Photoshop as the host program. And so, here's what I have, just from one program, just from Glow 2, okay? Now I'm going to take, I'm still not, this image is, I love it, all the exposure's right, um, I've got details in the, in the leopard, um, I've got some leaves that are more pronounced than others, the background is sitting back a bit around his face, so that's all great. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open this image, use this as an original image, and we're going into Impression. Okay, and I'm going to name this Impression 2. Okay, I'm going to go up here, we're going to go to Topaz Labs, Impression 2. Okay, eek! Now, you haven't lost your image, don't get upset. All you're going to do is click reset. Okay? So what I'm yeah, so what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to take you through how I um uh got to a very painterly portrait of this of this leopard. So we're gonna go into the uh I went into the modern uh, Le Modern, um, right here, Modern. And then what I did was I found a preset in here called Le Modern. Now, um, and I thought, well, I'm going to give this a shot because this looks a little, a little strange for what I'm doing, but I, I'm going to make something. So I clicked on Le Modern. Okay, what do we have here? Now, before I start working on this, I'm going to go down here to the opacity slider and look what's going to happen. And I got really excited when I saw this. I said, oh my God, I could take this just like this, bring it back in, my first thought was, bring it back into Photoshop, mask back the leopard, and I got a great image, da 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 da. And then I thought, no, I don't even have to do that anymore. I can go into masking right here in this program and I can I can do that but I didn't and then I thought I'm I'm really gonna fool around with this preset because this is a really interesting one so I'm gonna expand the sliders and this is what I set about to do I knew that I wanted something um, very unique for this image and I thought to myself I want to produce something that I can, I, I've got a spot in my living room wall and I want something really dramatic. I love this image. I've never, up until I worked in impression and glow with it, I've never been to successfully uh, produce an image that would be print worthy. So this webinar has been a very good catalyst <laughs> for my being able to produce some new prints, <laughs> which is great. So we're here in the stroke and Oh, I'm sorry, this, got, this zooms in and out, okay. So we're in stroke, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my adjustments here. Now, the preset, Le Modern, gives you a low number of brush strokes, okay? 
and that is the type, this is the first one here, to, oh, this first one, and it's outlined in blue. You can also go through here, and you can get variations of the strokes just from clicking on the different brush options. But we're going to use this, and then I'm going to go on to do my own tweaking, okay? So here we are. We're in low, and I'm going to, and the brush stroke is up to here. I'm going to leave all of this, and the large brush volume, I'm going to go here into, I think actually what I did here is, okay, we have the large brush volume, and I'm going to bring this down to about 25. The paint opacity, I'm going to leave at 100%. I'm going to leave the stroke rotation at 100%. The rotation variation at 100%. And the color variation at 100%. Stroke width, stroke length, I'm, I'm going to. Now, this is, this is what's going to bring about the change here. I want more of the strokes into the canvas. So all I had to do was go in bring the stroke length slider all the way to 100%. Now, we have spill. Now, this is also going to affect the opacity of this particular effect, okay? I don't want the whole effect showing. I want something visually very soft just surrounding my subject. And so I looked at this and I thought, wow, it's, 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 it's doing it for me. And here uh, we have the smudge. And this, what the smudge does is it will soften all of the brush strokes and give you more of a liquid effect, which I don't want here. So I'm going to leave the smudge at like 12%. And then we have the coverage. And I'm going to put the coverage to about... And, and what the coverage will do is, look, now this will give you, this will bring the whole effect back into view, but I don't want to use the whole effect on this image. It's too much. It's overkill. So I am just going to bring this to like, and as I say, it's all visual. We'll, we'll do this to maybe one over here, okay? Now. Here's where another change comes in. Let's see, do we have, we have too much coverage over here. Okay. And I'm working with a magic mouse. So the coverage effect now, this is going to change where, what, what position. Now look at that. I like that. I can go over here. And I can just bring back a portion. So you have so many different options. But I'm going to stay somewhere in the middle here. Okay? I'm going to choose this. And then, oops, my mouse is a little loose here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, so I don't get confused, I'm collapsing this because I am finished with stroke. I'm not going into color because of time constraints here. Um, I'm not going into lighting with this. I'm going into masking, okay? Now, right away it defaults to, to spot, okay? So I can bring back the integrity of the details of my leopard. I don't have to have that effect the lay modern effect over my subject, um, or I can just click on, uh, again, I can click on luminosity and bring it all the way here, okay? And that helps, I like the way it has affected my background. And then also there's the range over here. I can bring up the leaves if I want, or if I want it a bit more abstracted and I don't want as much reality, but I kind of like that too. That, then I have the opacity slider down here and we can bring back well, whatever, you know, whatever I want there. And then we have the, uh, then I can say, 
I don't want any of this. And I can go into reset and I can take the brush and I can change the radius, change the strength, and I can, excuse me, I can brush back my leopard, even at 50%. So you see you have a zillion and one options here. It's a, such a great program and it really is worth your while if you want to produce images like this. You can play around in it. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here and we're going to come out of this. And here's my finished image. I'm going to give you a little tip also. When I work in, in uh, Lightroom or in Photoshop, when I finish an image, very often I will go and I'll tweak it a little bit if, there are, if I see any exposure problems or whatever. I'll go into Curves and I'll click on Auto or I'll click on uh, Linear Contrast and it just can tweak it a little bit and just give you kind of a different effect. If you more, want a more you know, dreamy effect on the peripheral and it changes the color of the leopard a little bit, you know, that's just a tip. You can go into another, another uh, program and, and even work you know, from there. Okay, so now we're going to go into, um, so we've done, we've done glow and we've done um, impression to create this image. And I also, but I'm not going to do it now because of time, I also took this into Topaz Black and White and it is dynamic. And that's the one that I may print. So anyway, okay. Now this is an image that was taken in Iceland at a century old roundup um, that we were lucky to find. And um, I also loved the composition. It was snowing out. The horses were just all huddled together. And I wanted to do something with this. But as you can see, it's kind of a bland, um, mediocre. The, I love the composition, but there's nothing in the background. And I, and I said, OK, for the webinar, I'm going to really work on this. I'm going to take this into make a duplicate layer, Command-J. I'm going to take this into impression. Okay, and I'm going to go up here. We're going to go into Impression 2. And I was, okay, th see this defaults back to Les Modernes, which I like this too, actually. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to save this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call this uh, Icelandic, Iceland Horses. And um, I'm going to put this in my favorites, and I'm also going to put yeah, I'm going to put this in my favorites. Okay, so I've got this. So now I'm afraid I won't lose this, but I really like that. Um, okay, I'm going into, um, first we're going to go into Browse, and then in Browse we see the local adjustments that Topaz gives us, or the ones that I've downloaded. Um, and I'm going to go into, I found a preset called Bold that I absolutely fell in love with. I had never seen it before until I started working for the webinar. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this. I find it kind of distracting for me. Let's go and put my original up. So here you can see, okay, so now we're going to get started on this. And I'm going to, in, inside of this preset, okay, let's get this uh, to fit. Wait a minute, is this 100? No, why did it do this? Um, in, oh well, here, let's get rid of that. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is we're in stroke, okay? And we're low, medium, high. I'm going to use a lot of the, uh, the adjustments that are already built into the preset. But I'm going to go up here to 100 on the brush size, and that that is going to give me, that's going to bring up some of the light in here because it was pretty dark to start with. I'm going to leave the paint volume alone. I'm going to leave the paint opacity alone. The stroke rotation I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to, the, the um, rotation variation I'm going to leave alone. And the stroke color variation, I don't want any colors. Stroke width, all of these sliders, all of these adjustments I'm going to leave alone. The coverage, um, I'm just going to up it a bit because it brings in more of my image. 
brings in you know less of the vignette that's built in there. And then the coverage center, now this is interesting. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, so you can see my adjustments. I started here, okay, but I want to bring more light over to the to this horse here over on the right. So all I have to do is just move, move the little circle, and I can just create any kind of vignette that I want. And then, okay, so if I have the lighting, I have the lighting in the in the position that I want it, okay? Then what I do here is, yeah, the coverage center, I'm sorry, the coverage center, okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this so that I don't get confused. I'm finished with the stroke sliders. And I'm going to go into the lighting. And here in the lighting, I'm going to see what I want to tweak. So I'm going to tweak the contrast because that's going to help with bringing out some of the details of the horses. So I'm going to tweak this a bit, and I'm also going to tweak the highlights, and this is going to help me. Oh, it hasn't, yeah, here we go. Okay, that's going to bring up some of the highlights, and then I've got the shadow adjustment. Now, if I want to lighten some of the shadows, I can do that very easily with the shadow slider, as you can see, but then I'm losing some of the details, and I don't want to do that because the whole effect at the end, this all works together. And now the light position, it's very dark in the foreground, as you can see. So if I bring, I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to bring the light position down there a bit, and I'm going to go back up to the brightness slider once I've done that, and I can see that it will affect the bottom here, okay? And then we have the vignette. Now, if I want to bring the vignette in to about, I can bring it about oh, just a little bit here, and then the vignette strength is at 100%. Now, here's where the image is also affected, the vin vignette transition. I'm just tweaking it to the where to where where I want the position of the vignette. I don't want it encroaching too much on the image, and yet I want a vignette, so I am reducing the area, the amount of area that where the vignette is showing. And then this slider will give you an option of a square, a more square vignette, or a more rounded vignette. So let's use a more square vignette right here, and I'm going to keep. Uh, what we can do is here, you can go in here again and you can, okay, say I want my vignette color orange or, well, that's a little too dark. So what I can do is, let's say I want right here. Okay, then I'm going to click OK. Here's the new vignette color, all right? And what I can do is, now I don't know if it'll, sh yes, here we are, okay? This can be really, really nice. You can move it around, and you can even get, I mean, you can put it up on top, on the bottom, which is, you have to put the little circle on top here, or I can bring it down here, and I, I have that, and I like that effect too. And then I can also play again with the sliders, and here's the vignette transition, and I can, I can also, I can also use this to affect the strength. So say I want the strength right here, okay? Let's use that, okay. Now I'm done in here, so it's going bye-bye, all right? I don't want any texture in this image. I have all kinds of options, but we're not going to go there. But I want to do some masking. So we're going to go into the masking. I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to, in here, I'm going to take the brush. I'm not going to use the spot. I'm going to take the brush, okay, and I think I'm going to bring up just a not too large a brush. You know, we play with the radius with that, 
And what I want to do is I want to bring back, and I don't even know if I need it at 100%. Let me, okay. Let's bring back some of the detail on our subject, okay? And I think I'm doing it at about 60% here. Okay, so maybe I brought a little too much up in the background. So you know what? Click on the white, I go back in here, and I can do it at 100%, the radius. I don't want this up here. Okay. Okay. And then we've got it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this preset and I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to say Icelandic Horses Painting, okay? And I'm going to put it in Painting, and I'm going to put it in my favorites, and I'm going to click OK. All right, and then I'm going to click OK on this, and here's my image, and this is what we started with. So I was really happy with that. You've got a lot of options. <laughs> Well, we're almost at the end of the hour, Bobby. I hate to cut you off. Uh, if you'd like to follow Bobby, you can follow her at bobbygoodrich.com. You can also visit her Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bobbygoodrich. And if you'd like to contact her, her email information is on her website. So be sure and check that out. Drop her a message. Let her know how much you guys enjoyed this webinar. Uh, as always, if you have questions, you can contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And if you want to sign up for additional webinars, I'll be posting those shortly. This is the last one that we have registration for right now. But I will be posting those soon at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. All right. Well, Bobby, thank you so much. We had a ton of people, a lot of great feedback. Um, Good. I, you blew my mind with that leopard image. I'm Good. about to go play on it myself. Um, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest point is to have fun doing it, you know. It's, oh, uh, my God. I love it. I mean, if I'm ever bored or whatever. I said I have – I, for the rest of my life, I could sit at my computer – and I'll be busy till the day I die, you know, with all these programs. Well, Bobby, thank you so much again. Everybody, thank you for coming and sticking around for the Q&A. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can always contact us or reach out to Bobby. She'd love to hear from you and know your thoughts on the webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on future ones. Um, for the people still here, I uh, hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And, Bobby, thank you again so much.